what's going on my people welcome back to the live capital youtube channel where life is for the taking it's the host himself ted talk money coming back at you to tell you something i know you're not going to believe 98 percent of all central banks attend this particular meeting let us find out what's going on with the cypherium world takeover but before we do that guys i hope you've been enjoying the past 24 hours because you know what you get over here another 24 hours of blessings now you're probably wondering why 98 percent of all central banks are really attending these meetings and what could really be so important Important that would warrant their attendance. You know, I'm really here to give you an inside scoop on Cypherium, really what's happening in the world of finance. So please stay tuned. Now, right now, we're just going to be looking at our charts. As you guys can see here, there's a bit of an increase up 2%, which isn't bad. We see right now our Bitcoin at the time of this recording is just over 20,000. Guys, again, I'm, I'm not going to tell us that we're completely out of the woods here. I personally think we're still going to be seeing some lower levels for the crypto market. I'm not saying that to scare you or anything like that. I personally do believe that we will see a $14,000 Bitcoin relatively soon. Not, again, not naysaying or anything like that. Your Ethereum's right here at 13.4. Let's see who's done something past 24 hours. Elrond's still up. That's pretty cool. Chainlink is actually reacting to some news. I'll, I'll share a little bit of that with you guys as well. It's funny that Helium is right here still up 12%. Uh, they recently decided to move over to Solana, which if you guys didn't know, just recently was shut down for a, a couple hours. That would make it the ninth time this year that Solana has shut down. And you have your XRP right here up uh, seven percent on the week at forty eight cents, guys. So, like I told you guys, we're not we're no longer going to be in that thirty six, thirty four cent range. You know, we're seeing that XRP is maintaining some really good support, and it actually seems like we're having a little bit more retail attention that's going to be coming up out towards it. Uh, let's look at this thing on the month, as we can see right here. Yeah, that's this range I'm telling you guys about throughout uh, uh September right there. Throughout September, yep, lower levels, we're not going to get there anymore. So I really think it's a good time to be an XRP holder, just personally speaking. All right, moving forward right here, of course, if you are new to our channel, what we focus on is utility crypto and ISO cryptos. You have your Stellar right here at 12 cents, Algorand right there at 35 cents. Our Quant right here, he's moving up the ranks, but ton coin coming out of nowhere. Ton coin. Interesting. Um, what's the deal with that? Oh, okay. Circulating supply. It looks like there's only 5 billion ton. Hmm. Interesting newcomer. You have your quant right here up 10% on the week. That's the thing, guys. A lot of these uh, utility cryptos are really on the way up. Hedera right now has a lot more DeFi options that are available. So I personally don't see too much of a crazy price action happening for Hedera. Just personally speaking, you still have a few more H bar that need to really enter into circulation. So some people are kind of on the sidelines, as you guys can see. Regardless, over here on this side, you want to accumulate, get yourself a bad goal in all of these utility cryptos and move on to the next one. You know, IOTA's right here at 28 cents and our guy where he at where he at right here xdc at 88 which isn't bad at 3 1 uh, up 3.8 percent on the week so let's go ahead and step into our updates today my people so first up i want to show you guys how shimmer is actually now open for deposits on bitfinex so if you guys didn't know i mean shimmer is up like 600 percent since launch it's been going crazy so this is actually good news because it's only been available on a obscure exchange called bitforex so everybody who's listening if you guys were taking advantage getting yourself some shimmer getting them shimmies go ahead and do so if i have any iota holders that are listening guys utilize and i'll show you there the ecosystem later on in this about shimmer if you already hold some iota you might as well just utilize a deck so you don't have to go through any of the exchange fees or any of that you know bogus liquidity or anything from anywhere else all right now first up i want to show you guys this drop this tidbit of news okay celsius sets date for asset auction following their bankruptcy Bruh. All right. So if you guys didn't know, you have Ripple, FTX, just all the vultures just waiting to buy up all those assets from Celsius. So they've set the date. The auction will be on the 17th. OK, so keep that in mind that you're going to be having, for example, Ripple, FTX, all of those assets are going to be on auction, which is going to mean we're going to have more and more of those on the market. We'll see what kind of a reaction we will have. OK. Uh, moving forward next right here. This is actually for my XDC holders. This is out from the XDC ecosystem. This is plugin plugin was uh, sharing that they've recently started a electronics health records on blockchain uh, application. So if you guys don't know, plugin is going to be like your Oracle, for example, like Chainlink, uh, Oracle service that basically takes off chain data and aggregates it onto a network. So plugin right here is 
they pretty much just said it, that you guys could trust us with your medical records, health records and everything. And they are delighted to share uh, their mobile app. You know, so, of course, all of this is powered on the XDC network, uh, but it's really good to see that they're, you know, developing and doing more and more. So good stuff that you have your Oracle or your records, your health and everything already on the app. So really good stuff. All right. Uh, if you guys didn't know, Elon the Musk's he renewed his bid to purchase Twitter. Musk changed his mind a third time, and now he's renewed a bid to buy out Twitter for his original price of fifty four billion, fifty four point two. So if you guys didn't know, uh, uh, Elon has been back and forth, back and forth about buying Twitter. You know, he was blowing the whistle on all of the bots that are in Twitter and everything. I guess they might have ch made some changes possibly to cause the man to want to come right back into it in the latest turn in the Twitter ownership saga. Musk appeared to change his mind a third time, originally offering the company the offering to purchase the company back in April. OK, notably, the forty four billion dollar bid to buy out the social media uh, giant had already been accepted amid a legal bid to enforce the deal. Musk, who had previously attempted to back out, appeared to change his mind and sent a proposal to Twitter uh, again. OK, so since since Musk's renewed bid, Twitter shares spiked around forty nine bucks, as you guys can see here, looking at them stonks, looking at them stonks. OK, moving forward right here. So like I was telling you guys with the Shimmer uh, ecosystem, I mean, it's booming. It's already up and up. We've covered with you guys. Firefly is already a wallet as well that you can you know, you could stake your IOTA over on Firefly and people are they already received their shimmer. But right now, as you guys can see here, just in the middle three of coins iota of course is that main one you have shimmer here and assembly now this is the whole shimmer ecosystem right now you have dexes DeFi, tooling and all of that so guys get a good eye on this you know pause the video do what you have to do and then connect with all of these projects so you can have a little bit more of a deeper understanding of the shimmer ecosystem and as well iota iota is going to be that edge technology the most futuristic out of all the chosen five but this shimmer launch allows you to see that feelessness smart contract capabilities and it's all built on iota guys i'm telling you the development for this network is serious so if you are new to our channel what we do focus on of course is really the regulations that are coming to cryptocurrency the european union policymakers now have voted to modernize tax with what blockchain tech so this is actually being a um a trend that we're seeing actually more and more out of these governments and central bankers to make sure that crypto continues to be regulated. The European Parliament voted in favor of a resolution that acts as a crypto focused double whammy. We're tackling both tax evasion and streamlining rules for their taxation for crypto assets. So blockchain tech is also pushed forward as an instrument for tax collection, identifying the technology's potential to automate tax collection, limit corruption, and better identify ownership of tangible and intangible assets, allowing for better taxing uh, mobile taxpayers, better taxing mobile taxpayers. So keep this in mind, guys. The EU is going to be going on with their big bang in November. They're going to be moving over to ISO as well. And really, in November, SWIFT is going to be moving over kind of their the thing in November up until 2025. SWIFT is going to be having their MT messages and eventually they'll completely be out of the way and it'll only be ISO uh, ISO messaging that'll be about. But I want you guys to keep that in mind that the EU they're already saying they'll utilize blockchain tech, OK, to get out these uh, the taxes and everything like that. So keep that in mind. I'll put a link for you guys for that. Now, for my people that were really asking about Stronghold, we have the Stronghold CTO here explaining about um, blockchain governance, blockchain governance. So if you guys didn't know about Stronghold, they're going to be utilized by IBM Worldwire and as well the Stellar Network. So the reason why I'm showing you guys this is a, a utility crypto, but it has its association with XLM and Stellar. So listen to this. Let's consider the big picture of governance. It's a broad concept that extends beyond blockchain or political governance. For instance, in ESG investing, the G stands for governance and it's about how shareholders value responsible leadership of publicly owned companies. In the realm of blockchain, instead of a corporate board, some networks have on-chain governance, which are rules within the code about how participants could vote on changes. For instance, if network participants want to add a smart contract capability or fix a vulnerability, there are usually rules within the code itself about how to agree on updates. Good stuff, that guys. If you guys didn't know about governance, it's it's really cool. So, 
the on-chain governments that governance that they're speaking on, guys. There's so much that's happening uh, in the development of all of these networks. Next up, I want to show you guys this. So this is Jeremy Allaire, the Circle C CEO, Mr. USDC, says we want to be a full reserve digital currency bank. I just want to touch on this briefly with you guys. In a recent interview, Jeremy Allaire, the co-founder of your USDC, was talking about their long-term goals. We want to be a full reserve digital currency bank. We'd like a frame work for that to exist okay circle your safe stable coin okay i mean regulatory you even have i think blackrock and a whole bunch of people are custodian just they have all the assets but you have multiple places that are backing this usdc you get what i'm saying tether on the other hand is just like you know smoke and mirrors i'm not i'm not trying to come against your tether but just letting you guys know so they're saying here that we'd like a framework to actually exist for us to be a digital currency bank we'd like to apply for that license if such a license was available we think the world needs a full reserve banking system we think the world needs much safer base layer money and that's what stable coins represent so keep that in mind guys if you if you guys don't know right now here in the states Congress has been introduced a bill to pretty much ban stable coin issuance you can kind of think of it as like their way of uh, kind of it um bringing in their central bank digital currency like a digital dollar but long story short regardless of how anybody feels cross-chain interoperability is really where it's at people are going to want to be able to have a choice of what it is that they actually are going to want to be able to use but obviously that's going to have to be regulated down gotta say this guys you know how crypto used to be 2017 2018 it's not the same market people are taking crypto way more seriously now and that's going to have huge implications much faster than anybody expected. So and so if that becomes something that, say, the Federal Reserve supervises and we were sort of chartered and operated in that way and have the amount of supervision that goes with that, that's absolutely something we will do. So as you guys can see it, your USDC talking about USDC's liquidity, USDC is always redeemable one for one for US dollars, any amount always, period. We can make this assertion confidently because USDC is fully reserved with short dated US treasuries and cash uh, denominations in US dollars and held directly with leading US financial institutions custodians within the US regulatory perimeter. Boom. That's the only thing I can't really say in Tether. That's it. OK, that's the only thing. The USDC reserve does not contain any other high risk, less liquid assets such as digital assets, private or public equity, loans, secured, or unsecured commercial paper of any kind or credit ratings. Asset denominated in currencies other than U.S. dollars or assets held with third party subject to lockups or other restrictions. <laughs> Tether. OK, so I'll leave you guys a link for that and really do your own research and compare. See which stable coin you actually want to hold on to. But out of all of this, guys, I want you guys to see the, the future of all of this. Once we actually have our XRP, XLM, XDC and we're up there, I want you guys to consider how useful we'll actually be to all of these banks. Crypto custody, crypto custody, building the bridge to the digital asset market. Let's think about this for a second. If we're already holding all of these utility cryptos now and we flip the switch, we actually go to a digital age. Now you're going to be put in a position of power. You can actually provide a service to society because you're actually holding digital assets with use case. So really quickly, I'll leave you guys a, a link for this whole uh, breakdown. But just so you guys could see why they would offer the demand for crypto custody, institutional investors, corporates, exchanges, individuals, like they can have asset storage, investment agency, crypto miners, all of them. They have this new opportunity to do business with them, new business opportunities, stable coins, security tokens, NFTs, all of that. So long story short, when you have your XRP, XLM, XDC, and as well, when you could provide liquidity to a pool, because obviously we're moving over there. OK, you're going to have your well, not really a DEX, but something like it. Right. They're, they're offering cu custody. They're going to offer you guys custody, development of a custody solution, acquiring an investment in a custody solution. So something to really look into uh, seriously for hedge funds, investments, uh, investment banks, asset managers, all that they're done for, really. All right. Next up, I thought this was pretty cool. So if you guys are really looking forward to the Flare Network really dropping and doing some things, we're all looking for our spark. We're all looking for our Flare airdrop. But I thought this was cool. You have people that are actually building right now over on the Flare Network, you know, doing some things real quick. I actually let you hear this one second. <laughs>
Yeah, that was pretty sick. That was pretty sick. So that uh, Unreal Engine is real. As you guys can see, they're making those. They make those. Uh, <laughs> make those. Uh, those graphics. Pretty decent. If you guys didn't already know, EQ as well. They're really working. Uh, they're actually making games over on the XRPL. You know, not as uh, exciting, if you will, as the other one. But they've been working on this Plight's Wrath for quite a while. But it's really good to see them actually making some things happen. Of course, again, this is all built on the XRPL right here with this one. So good stuff. Of course, that Unreal Engine. Now, I want to address this one. I really want to address this. <laughs> we got some feedback um, from a certain individual, if you will. And some people were really feeling like this news says, it. well, now all cryptos are going to be ISO. I have to say this, guys, that this community is completely FUD proof. If you're really feeling like, you know, well, nothing is guaranteed. You know, you guys are too comfortable with your ISO cryptos. There is nothing guaranteed. Look at this, guys. I want to explain this whole thing to you. I mean, big shout out to people that are really holding link. You know, I'm really like that. We're having integrations with digital assets, but <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. So chain link partnership with Swift shows link attraction, uh, attracting attention from serious significant institutions, uh, says Coin Bureau. Now, right here, the news is five days ago, chain link announced Swift will utilize links cross chain interoperability prot protocol, the CCIP, as an initial proof of concept. According to this, according to chain link, the proof of concept aims to make Swift network become interoperable across digital or excuse me, different blockchains. Now, the guy um, Coin Bureau brings up a good point here because he says, uh, the bigger question is whether this protocol would increase the demand for Link if it does get adopted. And the answer seems to be no. That's simply because Link is used to pay chain link Oracle providers for their service. These Oracle providers then turn around and sell their Link for fiat. Even so, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be a speculative pump associated with Swift's chain link integration if it comes to pass. If it comes to pass. The only problem is this speculation is nowhere to be found during a bear market long story short they're saying another problem is that this partnership will not actually be all that significant that's because the consensus in cryptocurrency and elsewhere is that these proprietary interbank messaging systems are on their way out swiss partnership with Chainlink may be evidence of that okay so i want to explain this for you guys so swift Swift, if you guys don't know, Swift is a reason why it takes you two, you know, 48 hours for your check to clear and all of that. It's it's how right now central banks are connected with this network for cross border uh, cross border payments. They use Swift, which is just like a messaging service. It's, it's no money. They don't move anything. It's just a messaging service. So long story short, this cross uh, cross chain interoperability uh, protocol will allow long story short, basically those Swift MT messages to be aggregized onto other blockchains in theory in concept that's what they're saying in concept that's what swift would do but <laughs> this is what i want you guys to see and coin bureau really does bring a good point he's saying the only reason why swift will partner with the crypto projects is because it's trying to keep up with the times let me uh keep you guys in mind with this so Mapping a path to ISO with the Swift translator. So basically a powerful tool that could be used to validate and translate messages from any format to any format, including ISO. So it's kind of like that. The Deutsche Bank, they've come up with this translator because if you guys didn't know, uh, Swift and ISO are going to operate in a coexistence period between November and 2025. So those MT messages will still be there, but ISO is eventually going to take over for everything. High value payments all the way around. OK, so long story short, you know, for you to, you know, to think that Swift, you know, this this partnership is going to allow every single cryptocurrency to be ISO. Uh -uh. Because that's the thing. For example, for Zenfin, they already are compliant with these messages. They don't need a translator. They don't need Swift's uh, MT messaging or any of their legacy formats. That's really the point, guys. You know, this this right here, it's like a crutch to make sure that Swift can actually be some kind of relevant. But as you guys know, XRP, XLM, XDC, Algorand, they pretty much do the work already. So big shout out to everybody who owns some chain link. But we want to clear that whole thing up for you guys. Of course, I'll leave you guys a link to learn a little bit more uh, about what's going on with that. Um, so next up, getting to our main piece here, my people. Okay, 
So right here, we're going to be, I'm, I'm going to be walking you guys through this whole thing. Now, this one right here came out in 2020, guys. There's so much that happened during during that time that we're now seeing the ramifications of. We're now seeing the results of it. So you have to do go back in time. Bank of England joins key roundtable on central bank digital currency design, right? Bank of England, everybody knows about the Bank of England, okay? Look at this. The Bank of England will take part in a key meeting tomorrow to discuss central bank uh currency designs hosted by global central bank think tank the official monetary and financial institutions forum or the omfif okay the ceo of enterprise focused blockchain platform cypherium will also join the discussion hmm okay so what do we say exactly that we're talking about that 98 percent of all central banks attend these meetings? Right. I want to give you a little bit more about what it was that they were focusing on in this meeting. A key focus of the meeting will be to tackle the ways in which blockchain tech can benefit various models for central bank digital currencies. OK, so, for example, you guys have might have been seeing how we were covering um, Ukraine had tapped um the Stellar Development Foundation for their smart or for their CBDC. Ukraine contacted Stellar. Bank of Ghana contacted, you could say, MTech or Hedera for their central bank digital currency. But what I want you guys to see is the importance of this OMFIF in this 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 meeting. It's about the design. OK, much bigger than your implementation, your sandbox and everything. This forum is what will dictate what the design will be for everyone, okay? Sky said that as long as CBDCs remain in their early phases, now is the time to debate the advantages and disadvantages of infrastructural ideas, especially related to how these instruments will interact and operate with each other. Interoperability, interoperability. We're talking about Cypherium here, interoperability. I want you guys to see this whole thing because I don't want you guys to fall for any FUD out there. Now, you guys might see in this. You see, this is up October 14th, which I believe we we did cover this. But excuse me. Boston Consulting Group, their collaboration here. I wanted you guys to see this as a founding member of the OMFIF, a UK based central bank uh, banking think tank and the US Faster Payments Council. Cypherium has been advising policymakers, technologists, banking officials, and other relevant parties on various issues regarding the topic of CBDCs. Now, I'm, it just, I, I get flabbergasted almost because it's almost as if, what, what can you say? What can you say? Are they not advising policymakers? Oh, no. Just because they said it, do your own research or allow us to. For instance, Cypherium has already published notable research in collaboration with Bank of England, Bank of Hungary, Algorand, MasterCard, and Facebook DMs project. Now they have this collaboration with Boston Consulting Group, okay, as a concrete avenue for sharing what? The Digital Currency Interoperability Framework, the DCIF, an industry insight in order to help scale the perfect technology supporting central bank digital currencies y'all it gets more and deeper and deeper according to the study the people's bank of china swedish central banks and the european central bank are at the forefront of central bank digital currency exp experimentation and they are exploring a, ver a variation of a single token or account based centralized or decentralized architecture for the implementation of cbdc's okay so I hope you guys are seeing their front line when it comes down to these central bank digital currencies. Cypherium's very focus has been creating financial inclusion between civilians, banks, governments and enterprises with its DCIF. I want you guys to focus on that. It doesn't matter if you're new to this channel. It doesn't matter if you just heard us or if you just tuned in the DCIF. OK, so let's get to the meat and potatoes here. OMFIF or the official monetary and financial institutions forum. Hmm. Dialogue on world finance and economic policy. I'm showing you guys the official site right here. OMFIF is an independent think tank for central banks, economic policy and public investment, providing a neutral platform for public and private sector engagement worldwide. That's big. OK, that's big. That's bigger than your Twitter spaces. That's bigger than, you know, 
um, your next airdrop, right? We're talking about real central bankers, real whale money, people that have something to do with economic policy, okay? You could be on the internet all you want, but once you get out of the metaverse, once you get off your screen and get into the reality of it, you go get your Starbucks, you go get your McDonald's, there's an infrastructure there. With teams in London and the U.S., OMFIF focuses on global policy and investment themes relating to central banks, sovereign funds, pension funds, regulators and treasuries. Again, guys, so important that you guys see it. You want to have digital currencies that are that are favored uh, towards regulation. Right. You actually want to have regulation friendly cryptocurrency. So let's actually go ahead and see what we're saying here. Bingo. I'm showing you guys the official you know, publication here from the official OMFIF, their forum. But this this um, like they're about this is their whole thing. That's really about this is what I want you guys to see. A couple facts, a couple facts. Look at this. The top 10 most active central banks at these OMFIF meetings, Bank of England, Bank of Italy and the Federal Reserve. Y'all see that? The Federal Reserve. So if you're asking yourself the question, well, how is it that Cypherium was able to actually be in the Fed now service provider showcase? This is how. OK, and for anybody that really thinks that that's no big deal, and if you really think that, well, anybody can apply. Well, why haven't we seen any other cryptos? You really think that you could just pay some fee and be featured on a Federal Reserve website for this long? No. No, you actually have to have some backing here. There has to have a reason. People's Bank of China, Bank of Japan, European Central Bank, the EU already right there. Bank of Indonesia, 98 percent of central banks have attended OMFIF meetings since 2010. Ninety percent of those central banks are subscribed to these newsletters. Guys, I want you guys to see how important this whole thing is. If you, you know, if you're still on the fence thinking that, you know, this isn't real. Yeah, it is. They are a founding member of this institution. OK, and I'm telling you, they're making sure that policy happens. Economic policy happens. OMF has a membership network of central banks, sovereign funds and all of that. OK. Now, last one I want to leave you guys is this Klaus Schwab explaining the timetable for microchipping everyone. By 2026, listen up. Aujourd'hui, au bout de ça, on parle de plus qu'on pourra s'implanter. Ce sera quand ça Certainement dans les dix années à venir. Et d'abord, on va les implanter dans nos vêtements, uh -huh. c'est-à-dire wearables, comme on le dit. Et après, on pourrait s'imaginer qu'on les implante dans nos cerveaux ou dans nos topos. Et à la fin, peut-être il y a une communication directe entre notre cerveau et euh, la, le monde digital. Ce que nous voyons, c'est une sorte de fusion du monde physique, digital et biologique. On appelle quelqu'un, on n'a même plus le réflexe de devoir prendre un appareil, ça se fait naturellement. Hein. La, la, la technique continue le corps. Oui, vous, vous, vous parlez et vous dites, je veux maintenant euh, euh, être connecté avec n'importe qui. Hein et d'abord, vous avez les robots euh, personnalisés et j'ai vu que M. Zuckerberg euh, a prédit qu'à la fin de l'année, il va avoir son robot, son battler personnalisé ouais. qui est à sa disposition. Donc, comme dans Downton Abbey, on aura son, son butler personnel, son serviteur, son esclave Oui, mais, mais il y a une différence. C'est un serviteur qui, avec euh, l'intelligence artificielle, apprend et qui n'est pas seulement euh, votre assistant pour euh, des travaux manuels, mmh. qui peut vraiment être un partenaire intellectuel de vous. Wow. Okay, guys, you see what's actually happening here. Prepare yourselves. But guys, I appreciate you making it to this part of the video. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and as well hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of these updates. But I'll holler at you later. Peace. Mmh.